Hi guys, it is April from Getting Hugo With It. Today I'm here to share with you the books I'm hoping to read in March. So let's get into it. I kind of have a new plan of attack for my TBRs. This is partly inspired by Krista from Books and Jams. She has decided to do TBR still, but give herself a lot of books to choose from because sometimes it can feel stifling. Well, it depends on the person, but for me, it can feel a little bit stifling when I've got just a few books to choose from and I'm like, oh, I don't feel like that anymore. Like, you know, halfway through the month, you can change your mind. Um, and I'm not, you know, super strict with myself. Like, I can only read these books but it helps to have options. The other thing that I'm planning on doing is making sure that my monthly TBRs are well-rounded. I have found that I can pick up a lot of horror or thriller and a lot of historical fiction, but I forget about nonfiction. I forget about uh, contemporary. And one of my goals for 2019 is to read contemporary and I don't think I've read one yet. So this is not good. This is not a good start. I've got to switch it up. So um, so I'm kind of breaking things down by genre a little bit more. You'll see, you'll see, you'll see. Let's just get into it. So the first book that I'm going to read this March is A Beast. It's The Valley of Amazement by Amy Tan. This is about a mother and a daughter. Um, the mother is a courtesan and her daughter Violet I think at some point uh, is taken away from her mother and she becomes a virgin courtesan which I don't even know what the meaning of that is um, I've just just started it like 14 pages in and it's very well written just like Amy Tan is she she's a very good writer so I'm enjoying that so far so this is my historical fiction book of the bunch for this month uh, because it's so big. This is almost like two historical fiction books in one because it's, yeah, around 600 pages. So this is the first one happening in March. And then we move into scary books. So scary books, I kind of classify horror or thriller as scary books. Horror is obviously more scary than thrillers for me, but the first scariest book that I might pick up is Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. Now Katie from Chapter Stack started this little book club. I'm going to link the video where she announces that book club down below. Um, I've never read anything with her for that book club yet, but she's reading Pet Cemetery, and I have always wanted to read Pet Cemetery on audio. Um, it's narrated by Michael C. Hall, Dexter, so I mean my goodness, he would be perfect at reading this. I'm really looking forward to listening to this on audio and I mean it's coming out as a movie pretty soon. I want to say April or May it's coming out so I'm really eager to pick that up. So that is one scary option. The other scary option is The Hiding Place by C.J. Tudor. I just hauled this. I really loved C.J. Tudor's The Chalk Man, very much inspired by Stephen King. At least that book was. This I have no idea what to expect, but it's about a teacher who goes back to his hometown where very bad things have happened and he goes back under the ruse that he's going to be a teacher, uh, but he's actually there to deep dive into the mysteries that happened when he was living in that town. Um, I think they revolved around his sister. So I'm, I'm eager to read more CJ Tudor. It just sounds really, really good. So that is my, one of my scary options. Uh, and then, uh, a book I don't have here, sadly, because I'm on hold at the library, is Sweep. This is a children's literature book. It's a uh, middle grade March, and my friends Krista from Books and Jams, who I just mentioned like two seconds ago, 
and also Katie from Life Between Words. They join together every March and host Middle Grade March, just encouraging people to read more Middle Grade. The book that they've chosen uh, as a little book club thing is Sweep. So Sweep is like a fantasy historical fiction middle grade book about this little girl who is a chimney sweep um, and one day she gets stuck in one of the chimneys and the ashes inside uh, save her and he becomes her friend. So the ashes kind of turn into a monster um, and they become friends and it just sounds so sweet. I am on hold at the library. This might be something that I pick up at the end of March because it doesn't seem like it's coming in anytime soon. But it just sounds wonderful and I'd really like to read that for March. We shall see if it happens. Uh, so then for nonfiction, I mean, I've been thinking and thinking about this book constantly. So I think I'm going to pick up Educated by Tara. Westover. Tara Westover grew up very much on the outskirts of society. Um, her parents um, were people that like lived off of the land. Um, they're described as survivalists and it sounds like her father might have been a bit abusive. I don't know obviously yet because I haven't read it. But she apparently she at least feels like she had a really really hard life and um, she was not educated that's part of the main thing she wasn't educated in a very traditional sense she didn't go to school um, maybe I don't know if she was educated at home at least like homeschooled in some way um, but she wasn't formally educated and yet uh, later on in her life she got like a ton of degrees and I think she was a professor at Harvard? So I'm really looking forward to reading this. Most people love this book. I have heard some mixed things though. I, not everyone loves this book. Um, so I'm eager to find out where I land on that. Um, yeah. And then, okay, now we're getting into contemporary. The first one is YA contemporary. And I'm sure you're wondering, why in the world do you even have YA on your shelves anymore, April? Because you hate it all the time. I do. I usually despise YA. I just can't get into it. I always want to. However, um, I have a sneaking suspicion that I'm going to enjoy The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Angie Thomas just came out with her most recent book. I think it's called The Come Up or something like that. Um, but this is about a, a teenage girl who witnesses one of her dear friends uh, being shot by police. He's a black boy and he's shot by police and she's there. And it's about her experience with that. And j just, I can't even imagine witnessing something like that when you're a teenager or ever, or ever, but especially as a teenager. So I'm really looking forward to reading this. I think this is a really, really important book for this time. I'm thrilled that it's on the bestseller list. Like, why or not, like, the topic in here is so important for the States. Um, well, and for everywhere. It's about racism. But, um, yeah, it's very important. I'm really looking forward to reading that. Um, and then the last contemporary, so I'll probably choose between that and this is how it always is by Lori Frankel. Um, this is about parents who have a son, um, Claude, and um, he loves dressing up um, in dresses. And they realize that Claude is actually a girl inside and um, and they're helping Claude to navigate that experience. Uh, it sounds like they're incredibly supportive parents, which is wonderful. 
that's so great. And um, it also sounds like they're, you know, protective of him with the world. Like, that would be very hard to be. You're already protective of your child from the minute they're born and before. Um, but um, this just makes you, I think, more protective. I can only imagine like the mama bear and the papa bear in you would just come right out. So uh, apparently it's really good. And a lot of people who've read this have just like bawled their eyes out reading it. So I'm very eager. So yeah, I've got a ton of very, very lovely books to read for March. And I'm thrilled that they're like very vast very different from one another. I think I need to do that more because after I finish a thriller, I don't usually want to pick up another thriller. After I finish a historical fiction, I usually don't feel like picking up another one. So this will now give me more, more well-rounded options, I think. So I'm like, I'll see how this goes this month, but if it goes well, I'm hoping to kind of implement that into every month's TBR. I might not get to all of these, but I've given myself options and I think that's great. So let me know in the comments below what you're excited to read in March and I will talk with you soon. Okay, bye guys.